moments in your life, including when you're centrifuging. So if you've ever come across that time when you have more sample than you can fit in a single tube, and so you have to split your sample into multiple tubes and balance the centrifuge. Instead of spending hours trying to weigh things out and transfer and stuff, here are some tips for helping make your life easier. So first you need to figure out how many tubes you are, which you need, which is going to depend on how much volume that you have. And so I'll talk more about later when you have more than two tubes, but we'll start with the simplest scenario where you have two tubes that you, you, you have enough sample for two tubes. And also when you're filling these tubes, um, depending on the tube type, there might be certain like minimum and maximum limits. You never want to fill a tube super duper full because then it can like overflow and get into the centrifuge. So especially with like an ultra centrifuge, you want to be really careful. Hold it at the angle it's going to be at and make sure it's not coming into contact with that little insert part. Okay, so you want to start by just like pouring your sample and eyeball guessing it. Um, so it doesn't have to be perfect, um, just kind of like eyeball it. Then you want to get them so that they're kind of within like, I don't know, like half a gram or so of each other. Because then what you can do is, I like to save a tiny little bit of leftover of the sample in here. Um, so not a lot, um, less than a mil, just a tiny little bit that I can then use to adjust the volumes rather than trying to take one out of the other and then, because when you take one out, now you're not just reduce, adding to this one, you're reducing from this one and then it, can, it gets all complicated. So assuming that you don't need to get every, every, every last drop of your sample centrifuge, the tiny little bit that you leave in here is not going to, is going to be like a drop in the bucket compared to the amount of sample that you have in here. So you don't need to worry about that and it's going to make your life easier. So once you've done your eyeball guesstimate, you kind of just like back and forth. When you're doing the back and forth, make sure that you um, don't like get it spilling on the outside. Use like a Kim wipe, make sure that you're wiping it off um, because you're going to then wipe that stuff off later anyway, or hope so, before you stick it in your centrifuge. So now take, after you've done the eyeball guess, um, stick the lids on them or at least next to them and put them on your balance. When you're putting things on the balance, be really, really careful about what you stick your tubes on when you stick them on the balance. I've had way too many times where I've lost my sample. You think I'd learn, um, but where the tube like falls over because I'm just like balancing it precariously on like a little styrofoam thing. I lost a lot of lysate that way. Don't let it happen to you. Use something that's sturdy. Put it in the center. If you put it off to the side, then you might find like when you put it back on, well now it's a totally different weight because the balance is all confused. So make sure that you put it in the very center. Find the one that is heavier and start with that. So put the cap it um, and zero, so tear your scale, um, and then take it off, put the other one on and see what you need to add, and then add it from that little bit of excess that you had left over. So the density of water is about a gram per mil, which is really convenient. Um, so the density of a solution, like if you have a lysate or something like that, it's gonna be heavier. So basically for every gram that you were off, you would need to add a mil of water or like a little less than a mil of your solution. Um, so just a little like quick estimate. Typically you want to get it closer than the mil before you're doing this so you don't have to keep like a mil of excess in here. Worst comes to worst, what you can do is if you didn't want to then go back and take out of the other sample, you can actually add buffer or whatever um, your lysis buffer was say. Um, but the problem here is now you're diluting down your sample and you probably don't want to be diluting down your sample. Um, yeah, so. So try to get them as close as you can with that eyeball guesstimating first. But you can then transfer from your leftover sample um, with either like a P1000 or even just like a transfer pipette. Um, just put it up and make sure that you have the lid on here too when you're doing this. Of course, for this eyeball guessing to work, you need to make sure that your tubes are actually the same. Um, so you can see that these might look pretty similar and in fact I can use them in the same rotor. But because they're made out of like slightly different material, um, they're going to have slightly different weights um, and same for like caps these I could use the same like these caps with either of these and they would both work in the centrifuge but these are going to have different weights and so if I were to just do it based on eyeballing well now it would be off um, and also that's why another reason why you want to make sure that you're weighing with the caps instead of just assuming that all the caps are going to be the same this is especially important when you're dealing with ultra centrifuging you want to make sure that things are really really balanced in this case for some of the caps, especially with the ultra centrifuge, they might have like an O-ring. Make sure that they actually have that O-ring in there when you're doing this. And make sure that they don't have water or stuff in there. You also wanna make sure there's not water on the side of your tubes. So 
sometimes you might be preparing your tubes on ice. If you're doing this, um, you want to make sure that you're wiping off that ice before you stick your tube on to weigh it. Um, because this ice is going to add extra weight, um, and then when you wipe it off before you put it in the centrifuge, well now you've reduced the weight. Or if you don't wipe it off, then you're getting water in your centrifuge, and you don't want that to happen. Speaking of which, when you are weighing these out, you're assuming that your centrifuge, rot the, the, the little buckers, buckets and the rotors, that those are empty. If they're not empty, well now, even if the tubes are perfectly balanced, your samples aren't going to be balanced. And so you want to look beforehand. If there's anything liquid in there, like clean it out, um, take like a Kim wipe or a paper towel, take like a screwdriver and like kind of just like sort wrap it in the paper towel and like screw that. Also, at the end of your runs, make sure there's no liquid in there. Um, if there is, clean it out, be nice for the next person, clean it out, dry it out, and put it back. Okay, so that will get you balanced samples when you have two tubes. Unfortunately, a lot of times you don't have two tubes. So you can, if say you had enough for like three tubes, well, you could measure them all in out so that they were the same and equally balance them and space them out equally. But then you have to make three tubes match, which is, a pain. So what's easier is to just make two tubes match and then make a third, make a balance for it with just using water. It's going to be a lot simpler. It's also simpler in that you can just put whatever volume that you want. So basically I start by just kind of eyeballing it out, making the three tubes. Um, and then I take the two that look the closest, take the one that's the heaviest, use that as my zero, take the other one, use my third tube that I have left over. In this case, I could have put, I could put all of my sample in because now I can take from that sample, add it to the first sample, or to the second sample that I'm trying to get up to the first sample. Now I can add to this, so these are balanced. Now I can take the third sample and whatever weight it is, I just have to make a balance for it using water. And so I can start by eyeball guessing it and then just squirting in water such as with one of these bottles. Um, if you have like more than three, like say you had like five tubes or six tubes or whatever. So basically you only need to worry about two at a time. So even if you have like five samples, you don't have to weigh all five out at once. So start by just like eyeballing them so they're all fairly even. Choose the ones that are most similar. Start by balancing those together, then deal with the other ones. Um, and so that, um, yeah, that'll make your life a lot easier when you're going to do this. Just make sure that you remember which ones goes with which so that you don't nicely bounce these all out. Then stick them in your ice, go over to the centrifuge and oh, which one's which? Have to go back to the balance and figure out which one's which so that you know to put them across from one another. So, hope that helps you make your balancing life easier um, and just a little bit of tips. Um, and so, happy spinning.